Welcome to the coolest stuff on the planet. Welcome to the coolest stuff on the planet. I'm Sarah. And I'm Catherine. And you know, Catherine, our fascination just has never waned when it comes to the most famous ship in the world, the Titanic. Hmm. And this year on April 15th, that marks the 100-year anniversary of its sinking. So there's just really been a lot more attention being paid to what was at the time that it left it was considered the unsinkable ship. That's right. And, you know, the Oscar-winning movie Titanic is out in 3D right now. There have been museum exhibits on both sides of the Atlantic. There's a major exhibit at the Maritime Museum in Southampton, England. TV specials, musicals, even a Titanic memorial cruise, which is an interesting thing to think about. It is. I'm not sure that I'd want to yeah. chance fate with that one, but I'm sure it sold out. I'm sure it is, too. So we just really want to focus this podcast on what we consider sort of the creme de la creme of all the things going on surrounding Titanic and it's a new 150 million dollar museum that just opened in Belfast Northern Ireland uh-huh. and that's where the Titanic was actually built and it's called Titanic Belfast appropriately so and it's now the world's largest Titanic exhibition at more than 150,000 square feet And it includes nine different interactive galleries. Yeah, these galleries incorporate special effects and full-scale reconstructions that allow the visitor to explore the Titanic from the very beginning when the ship was being constructed in Belfast in the early 1900s right up to the present day. What was interesting to me was that I didn't know that Belfast at the time was this huge hub of industrialization. And so the ship was built there because uh, Harland and Wolf was the biggest shipbuilder in the world at the time, and they were based in Belfast. Exactly. And the museum is located in the former shipyard where Titanic and its two sister ships, Olympic and Britannic, were built. Uh huh. And it's in this just really super modern six story building that was actually designed to resemble the hulls of those ships. Yes, and from above, the building looks like a white star, which was the symbol of the Titanic's operators, the White Star Line. Of course. Once you get inside, you get to pass through these nine galleries that we mentioned before, Mm -hmm. and you sort of experience the ship through these computer-generated images and virtual reality, so it's almost like you're on the Titanic, and you get to see full-scale models of first, second, and third-class cabins, and you get to see the wonderful grand staircase that we all know from the movie Titanic. Yeah, I can just see them right now. Jack and Jack Rose. And Rose. Yeah. Yes, we all know that. That's right. And will your heart go on from that? Of course. My heart still goes on, <laughs> Catherine. I'm glad to know that. <laughs> Speaking of going on, let's move on to Gallery 4, where, where we can uh, see some 3D technology which will allow the visitor to walk the ship's length and explore the engine rooms, the third-class saloons, the first-class car, does. You can also see the restaurant where they ate. You might remember that from the movie. Of course. The navigation bridge, all kinds of stuff like that. And then moving on to Gallery 5, that's where they really focus on the maiden voyage when it actually left Southampton and the just wonderful mm-hmm. celebratory nature. Oh, yeah, everybody must have been real happy then, right? Exactly. Yeah. But the ship actually left Belfast on April 2nd and didn't reach Southampton and embark Southampton until April 10th. And mm-hmm. it was filled with more than 1,300 passengers passengers and more than 900 crew. And Gallery 5 really lets visitors, you know, become acquainted with these passengers and crews and really just lets them know what it was like to travel on the Titanic, which at the time was the largest moving object in the world. Yeah, and then you move from that to the next gallery, which is dedicated to the actual sinking. So it's a little more somber with the light and the temperature and the sound. And I was surprised to learn that it was just four days into this voyage on April 14 when the Titanic hit that iceberg at full speed and they got this 300 foot long hole right below the waterline. And that's what caused the ship to sink in just three hours with uh, 1,500 passengers and crew. Exactly. Just three hours. That's so yeah. scary. Gallery 7 is really where they explore the aftermath of the sinking. And yeah. it's dedicated to the investigation, really who is to blame and what changes came of losing those 1,500 people at sea. What were some of those changes? We all know that there weren't enough lifeboats. They really only had enough lifeboats for half of the passengers. So Mm -hmm. the biggest change was that they mandated ships had to carry enough lifeboats for 
all passengers on board. But it also led up to what is now the International Ice Patrol, and it's still around today, and it just simply monitors icebergs in the northern Atlantic. So uh -huh. that just was not around back in the day. It's hard to believe that some of those things like you were talking about, lifeboats and, and the patrol, were not there in 1912. Not there. They had the crew up in the bird's nest just looking out for icebergs, hmm. and that was it. Wow. So at the very end now of this exhibition, you get to explore the wreck where it is now at the bottom of the ocean, and you can you can see the ship, you can see inside all the debris around it, and there's you can see thousands of photos that were taken by Dr. Robert Ballard, who was the person who discovered the ship in 1985. Yeah, so you can compare it as it is today to how the ship mm -hmm. was in 1985. Yeah, yeah, and they're still doing explorations there. Absolutely. Mm -hmm. So that's going to wrap up our visit to Titanic Belfast, which actually just opened about a week ago as we're recording this today. So it's just a brand new exhibition dedicated to the Titanic. And we will have more information about the museum on our blog, as always. Yes, and you can also follow us, as always, on Facebook, Twitter. You can send us an email, particularly if you've been there. We'd love to hear about that. And you can find all those addresses at the end of the podcast. And we'll see you next time on The Coolest Stuff on the Planet. For more on this and thousands of other topics, visit HowStuffWorks.com. Don't forget to check out our other podcasts, free, on iTunes.